Now that we've seen the complete project that we're going to build, I am going to close the complete project. And I have here the incomplete project. And we can see that our hollow man statue, as I'm calling him, has turned pink, right? And so this pink color is actually a shader itself. It's Unity's pink error shader. And this is displayed anytime something goes wrong with the rendering process. So if our shader fails to compile while we're typing it, or if a material is missing, which is the case here, it will display our object as this unshaded solid color pink silhouette. And this is actually a, a vertex, an unlit uh, vertex and fragment shader that we're going to be learning how to write. This is the same type that just draws solid pink pixels throughout the image. So if we look at the Hollow Man statue, here's the mesh, right? Here's the skinned mesh renderer that's actually displaying it. And we can see we have here a missing material, right? And I intentionally deleted the material here so that we could see what it looked like with the missing material. So the goals for our session are that we want to learn the fundamentals of how Unity renders images to the screen. We wanna learn how to control the rendering of objects using custom shaders. And then as an example, we're gonna write a hologram style unlit shader, which allows us to control the color and transparency of the object and to manipulate its vertices during rendering. So we have some assets for you to download. This is the project you see on your screen, the incomplete version, uh, and you can grab this at the link shown. What I wanna do before we actually get into creating anything is I wanna give a quick overview of the rendering process and what shaders actually are. So this is actually a little diagram that I borrowed from Alan Zucconi's uh, excellent A Gentle Introduction to Shaders article. And so this gives us a kind of a very high level overview of the process of rendering a 3D model in Unity. So we have the 3D model asset, which contains vertices, vertex colors, UV data, and normals, right? That's up here. We have a game object in Unity, which has a mesh renderer component with a material assigned, right? And in our case, we have a skin mesh renderer because our holographic man could be animated. We're not using any animation here, but theoretically we could. And so we have a skin mesh renderer in this case. We have a material not assigned right now, but we need one assigned to render it correctly. The material uses a shader and the material also holds property values. So textures, colors, and other property values like floating point numbers or, or other values that we wanna input from the inspector. The shader then uses the data from the 3D model and from the material to draw pixels to the screen based on its CG or HLSL code, right? So we start with the model, we assign a material to its renderer, and the material uses a shader to decide how that's actually gonna be drawn. So let's look at a definition for a shader. So this is the definition that you'll find on Wikipedia, which is a good start. Um, a shader is a computer program that is used to do shading during the rendering process, the production of appropriate levels of light, darkness, and color within an image or in the modern era, also to produce special effects or do video post-processing like image effects. A shader is a program specifically made to run on a GPU graphics processing unit. It is ultimately what draws the triangles of your 3D models. So the really, really basic explanation of what a shader is, is it decides how your 3D model is going to be drawn, right? Where are the vertices gonna be? What colors are gonna be applied? What color are the pixels gonna be that are drawn? Um, and that can be controlled and customized in the shader code uh, that you choose to write. So let's jump back over to our incomplete project. So the first thing that we need to do is I'll make this in our shaders folder. We're going to select the shaders folder, right click and choose create shader. And this gives us a list of possible shaders. And I'll give you some little information about what each of those are. Uh, we are going to create a very simple unlit shader today. So we're gonna choose unlit shader. And we're gonna call this 
hologram. Now, you may notice there's also this invisible shader. This is just a bonus. Uh, this was a shader that we made during our Amplify shader editor training a few weeks ago. I figured I would just provide the shader for those of you who want to look at another custom shader and get some ideas. So that's a little bonus for you guys. And this is the compiled version of the shader, right? So you don't need Amplify shader editor to work with it or to use it. And so let's take a look at the types of shaders that we saw in that menu. So the types of shaders in Unity. So surface shaders in Unity are a code generation approach that makes it much easier to write lit shaders. So shaders that are affected by the lighting model, as opposed to using low level vertex pixel shader programs. Unlit shaders do not interact with Unity lights. So they're useful for special effects like our hologram, um, and these are the type that we're going to write today. Image effect shaders are typically a post-processing effect that reads a source image, does some calculations on it, and then renders the result into the provided destination or render target, for example, using graphics.blit. So the most common use for image effect shaders is to take the image that's being rendered by the camera, apply some processing to it, like maybe bloom or depth of field or some kind of color correction, uh, and then pass that out to be displayed on the screen, right? So we're effectively treating the whole screen as a texture that we apply some processing to and then display. Compute shaders are programs that run on the graphics card outside of the normal rendering pipeline. They can be used for massively parallel GP GPU algorithms or to accelerate parts of game rendering. Compute shaders are way outside of the uh, scope of today's training. Um, but I figured I would mention them because they're an option there in that menu. So now we have our new hologram shader, right? We've got some idea about the other types of shaders that we could be creating. We're going to be creating an unlit shader today. Very simple. So what we're going to do now that we've created the shader, we're going to create a material to go with it. And one little trick is if you have this selected already, you can right click on it, choose create material, and it will create a new material with the correct name and with this shader already assigned, right? So if you already have a material and you want to change the shader that it uses, you can do it from this menu, right? We could choose our invisible shader, for example, or in the unlit section, our hologram that we just created. So now we have this unlit hologram shader, right? What we want to do is we want to apply it to our mesh so that we can stop drawing it as this pink silhouette and draw it instead as a white silhouette. So the default unlit shader just makes things white and it has a slot for a texture. So we can uh, apply a texture that'll be mapped to the object based on its UVs. Uh, and we are going to do that. Let's actually start by doing that now. So we have a slot here for the texture. So I'm going to select texture and I'm going to use this enemy emission map. This was originally used in a, a standard shader as an emission channel, um, but we're going to use it as the albedo or main color channel. Uh, and as you can see, it looks like this. So it's kind of some cool sort of futuristic looking red lines mapped on our model. Um, and in this case, so this is just uh, displaying the color. And if we're curious about what this uh, texture looks like, we can double click it to open it up. This is what the actual image file uh, looks like that's being applied to the model. Now we're no longer in our sort of pink default shader zone. Um, but this is nice, right? It's textured, uh, without lighting, but it's not super exciting yet. So in order to customize it, we're going to need to dive into the shader code, which we will do in the next segment.